Uh, my dear students, we are now going to start new e-content course on technology of metal forming, right. The earlier lecture which dealt with mechanics of metal forming was particularly based on the mechanics and analysis part of various metal forming processes, right. So, that course that is the mechanics of metal forming is prerequisite for this particular uh, course to be continued, because unless you have the knowledge of the mechanical mechanics part concerning metal forming, you may not be able to understand very well this particular aspect that deals the technology of metal forming. So, the technical aspect how do you manufacture products by different metal forming processes, what are the concerns, what are the toolings, how the, the selection of the lubricants and all those things are concerned, it concern here right. So, I will again uh, request you to go through the earlier e content course that is on mechanics of metal forming to make you uh, very sure the understanding of this particular course on technology of metal forming right so as you know the technology of metal forming so let us it is consisting of two words common the technology part and the metal forming part so what is technology you most of you people understand that uh, technology uh, it is a process right so uh, technology is a process that uses science methods rules and uh, sometimes heuristics etc to convert a work piece into a defect free finished product and that too economically. If you do not add economically, it is left out. So, whatever you produce the by way of some methodology, by way of some technique, rules etcetera, it has to produce defect free product. See, people may produce in a different way, different routes a product, but it has to be defect free and it is to be produced economically, then only we that process we call it is a technology. So, that is the very basic crude way of technology to concerning metal forming. So, the second word which is very common the metal working you know it consists of deformation process right in which a metal or uh, metal billet or work piece or blank is usually shaped by tools or dies various tools or and dies etc the design and control of such processes basically depend on an uh, understanding of the characteristic of the work piece material the conditions at the tool work piece interface the mechanics of the plastic deformation that is the, the metal flow, the equipment used and the finished product requirements etcetera. These factor in fact influence the selection of tool geometry and material as well as processing conditions that is uh, the work piece and the die temperature and lubrication or lubricant use etcetera. Okay. 
because of the complexity of the metal working operations, the, the modes of various types such as uh, the, the analytical method, the physical or numerical models are very often uh, 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 relied upon. These are very much used now uh, to design such processes, right? And that's how the, the that's how we concerned with the metal working. So if you add these two word, then it becomes the technological aspect. So that's how the course deal with the technology of the metal forming. Okay? You know that. Uh, a large number of manufacturing processes in which plastic deformation is used, wherein uh, there is a change to change the shape of the work piece. The main purpose is to get from the initial stock to the final stock finished product. The tool usually is called as die and uh, uh, applies that, that applies stresses. Uh, that exceeds the yield stress of the material, strength of the material and so the metal uh, takes the shape which is determined by the geometry of the die. right? So, in such processes it is characterized by significant operations and very massive shape changes takes place and that is how the bulk we sometimes use as bulk forming processes. So, bulk refers to the work piece or work part uh, with uh, a relatively low surface area to volume ratio you know and uh, the starting work shapes therefore include cylindrical billets and rectangular bars etc okay so if you look at the various manufacturing processes say here in this uh, table so there are different uh, groups of manufacturing processes like shaping either you shape it by casting uh, the another group is forming uh, the other group shearing the other group joining it may be coating it may be sometimes modifying metal properties etc by say other processes so we are concerned with the main group 2 which concerns forming here okay so, look at in forming, we come across various types of forming processes, wherein we come across a different types of loadings, alright. So, you may come across uh, these types of loading, which uh, number 1 to number 10 and rather 11. So, for an example, you may have a process where you have a simple uniaxial tension the tensile test simple centile uh, testing machine and uh, tensile testing work piece. Secondly, you may have a biaxial tension cases, you may have a triaxial tension cases, you may have biaxial tension and compression cases like fifth and you may have biaxial tension and compression both. The sixth you may have uniaxial compression like here you may have biaxial compression operations, you may have biaxial compression and tension, you may have triaxial compression you may have like hydrostatic forming, the pure shear cases and uh, you may have cases where the simple shear with triaxial compression is also there. So, now you come across the, the, the forming processes could be a very variety of the processes depending on the loading uh, applied onto that while forming. So, if you look at the group 2 the forming basically you can form by pressure like the rolling process, open die forging process, die forging process, impact extrusion process and extrusion process. So, these are these are all concerned with forming by pressure and that is the compressive pressure basically. The second case forming may be the tensile and compressive forming like you have uh, drying process, wire drying, 
deep drying, you may have uh, the spinning process, you may have color forming process, you may have upset bulging as well. Okay. The third category may have like forming by tensile forces like stretching, like bulge forming, like stretch forming, these all comes under the tensile forces. You may come across the forming by bending, you may come across by forming by shearing as well. right? So, the, there is a huge variety of forming processes. So, if we look at this, what is technology of metal forming? That means, technology is that is the technique by which the part or component are set into defect free finished products from metal stock. That is metal forming uh, that involves changing the shape of a work piece of metal using forming tools, dies, presses and energy etcetera. Right? In general terms, however, it may be classified roughly into five major categories like first the mechanical working processes like we say the forming, extrusion, uh, the forging, rolling, drying, various sheet forming operations. Second uh, may be categorized as said earlier the casting process that we are not concerned much, powder and fiber metal uh, forming processes, then electro forming process, magnetic and explosive forming this comes into high energy rate forming and no doubt the joining other joining processes. So, we concern the first case usually uh, that is the me uh, mechanical working processes. So, before we starting to see the various metal working processes, let us see the briefly the historical aspects of these metal working processes. You know the, the simple hammering of gold and copper in various regions of the Middle East was concerned around 8000 BC. So, the, the hammering gold and copper was used uh, and with the advent of copper smelting around 4000 BC later in the copper age. So, it was found that the hammering of the metal uh, brought about desired increase in the strength that is a phenomenon now known as strain hardening. So, that is the first beginning of uh, the hammering and that is the forging becomes the very 8000 BC around the process. The quest for strength and uh, spurred a search for alloy that were uh, inherently strong and led to the utilization of alloys of copper and tin, the bronze age and iron and carbon like the iron age. Okay. The iron age uh, which can be dated as the beginning of around 1200 BC followed the beginning of the bronze age, the iron age which can be dated as beginning around 1200 BC. Uh, and the beginning of the bronze age uh, by the around some 1300 years. Most metal working was done by hand in fact, until the, the thir 13th century. At this time the, the, the tilt hammer was developed and used primarily for forging bars and plates. You, okay? So, the, the development of rolling mills followed that uh, of the forge, uh, forging equipment. In fact, uh, Leonardo da Vinci notebook includes a sketch of a machine designed in 1480 for the rolling of lead for a uh, stained glass window. In 1945, Leonardo da Vinci uh, is reported to have rolled the flat seeds of precision metal on a hard operated uh, sorry hand operated uh, 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 two roll mill for coin making purposes right. However, the development of large mills 
capable of hot rolling ferrous materials uh, took around 200 years. Early mill uh, which was uh, employed flat, which employed flat rolls for the making seat and plate and until the middle of the uh, 18th century, uh, these mills were driven by water wheels. Okay. And uh, during the industrial revolution, you know, at the end of the 18th century processes, the processes were devised uh, for making iron and steel uh, in large quantities to satisfy the demand for metal products. A need uh, arose for forging equipment with large capacity and invention of the high speed steam hammer in which the hammer is raised by steam power and the hydraulic press in which the force is supplied by hydraulic pressure is developed. Right? So, uh, that is how the, the, the development of farming processes took place. Uh, the past hundred years uh, have seen the development of new types of metal working equipment and uh, new materials with the uh, special properties and applications, you know. The new types of equipment have include, uh, included the mechanical and the screw presses and the high speed tandem rolling mill as well. Okay. So, the material that have uh, benefited from such development uh, in uh, equipment range from the, um, the uh, the UV, uh, ubiquitous low carbon steel used in atmos uh, are, uh, mainly in automobiles and applications, uh, many other applications that uh, appliances to especially aluminum, titanium and nickel based alloys. Right? In fact, in the last 20 years, the, the formulation of uh, sophisticated mathematical analysis of farming processes has led, further led uh, to uh, higher quality products and uh, increase efficiency in the metal working industry. So, that is how I thought to give you the, the small brief history, how the things has developed. Now, look at this slide where uh, we call it as the bulk farming processes, different bulk farming processes that we are going to deal the technological aspects in this particular course. We also it call it call it as uh, massive farming processes, you know. So, if you look at the forging process, as I said the forging has been the very beginning process way back 4000 BC. 8000 BC. So, forging uh, the different processes that come across closed die forging with flash, closed die forging without flash, coining, electro upsetting, forward extrusion forging, backward extrusion forging, hobbing, isothermal forging, nosing, open die forging, rotary or orbital forging precision forging, metal powder forging, radial forging, upsetting etcetera. These all concerned with various aspects of forging that we will deal into this course. The second category which is very popular, we call it as the rolling process, you know. So, if you look at the, the usual, the seat rolling, the shape rolling, the tube rolling process ring rolling process, right? rotatory tube piercing process, gear rolling, roll forging, cross rolling, surface rolling, shear forming, tube reducing etcetera. These all fall into different rolling processes like you have here. The other the third category falls into the extrusion process, where you have non lubricated hot extrusion case. You may have lubricated direct hot extrusion, then you may come across 
hydrostatic extrusion as well. So, if you look at this figure in extrusion you have a ram force f and the billet which is the red part and it passes through a die comes out a product. Whereas, in case of drying we may call it as a wire drying, we may call it the drying with rolls, we may call it as ironing, we may call it as uh, tube sinking and uh, the, the seat forming seat drying that is in the form of cups is also very popular that figure is also shown both the wire drying process and the seat drying process is shown here. So, we these processes we would discuss the details subsequently chapter wise in this particular course. Look at this what happens in this case it is a bending process. So, but it is a bending is at a seat at 90 degree. So, you apply a force f and you use a punch. The second uh, part where you have the, uh, the punch and shearing action takes place, you can see the it shears into two piece that is a another process. So, uh, all these various forming processes discussed so far are associated with a large variety of forming machines or equipment. You use variety of machines, presses, toolings, etcetera. So, you may require equipments, various kind of equipment to deal with these processes. So, rolling mills for plates like strips and shapes we come across we come across uh, the machines for profile rolling from a strip, ring rolling machines, thread rolling, surface rolling machines, magnetic and explosive forming machines, draw bench for tube and rod wire drying and rod drying machines, machines for uh, pressing type work like press working all these things are we require lot of uh, forming machines and equipment. So, you look at this figure where it is a uh, hydraulic drop hammer press has been shown and the various components of a this press is shown. Like if you see the number one is the hydraulic drive, second one is the uh, a guide, the third one is the ram lock, fourth is ram, fifth is guides in columns, annual bolster, the annual block. So, uh, that is a simple press and the different parts of the hydraulic drop forging hammer. Look at this figure, it is a bigger hydraulic uh, vertical press you see, it is more than 1000 ton and uh, it can be used uh, sometimes with paddle as well as otherwise you require some control panel from outside for controlling the strokes and all that. So, with this basic discussion what are metal forming processes you might have come across. Okay. So, for forming the desirable the material properties must be there must be some desirable material properties. When you form a material either by forging I by extrusion or wire drying or so over. So, what is the desired material property? It is the low yield strength and high ductility. So, a material which has low yield strength and high ductility is the best for forming especially for these processes. So, these properties are affected by temperature also that is the, the strength, yield strength and ductility. When the work temperature is raised the ductility increases and yield strength decreases. So, other important factors are also like uh, you have uh, strain rate and friction as well very important 
that plays a very important role in metal forming processes. Look at these figures. So, these figures where you have the rolling, so that has a biaxial compression stress, another the forging operation where you have a triaxial compression process, the extrusion has got triaxial compression process, swedging has got uh, a biaxial compression process, deep drying which you look at, it is a uh, in flange of the blank you have biaxial tension and compression and in wall of the cup there is a simple uniaxial tension. So, that the beginning I told you the different types of stresses, these are some of the examples where you look at. So, for an example if you take the wire drying and tube drying you have a biaxial and compression tension. So, you have biaxial compression and tension. If you take the straight blanking operation, bending operation, sorry. So, the at the bend you have biaxial compression and uh, biaxial tension as well. So, starting with this basic, let us see another very important issue that one has to know before starting this course the flow stress, what do you mean by flow stress of a material. So, for most metals at room temperature, the strength of the metal increases when deformed by any of the processes, when it is deformed and that happens, why? Because the strength increases, why it happens? Because of the strain hardening, you know all of you. So, the flow stress in fact, it is a instantaneous value of the stresses that require to continue deformation, deforming the material. So, basically the flow stress we define as Y f, so that is equal to capital K and uh, the strain raised to the power n. So, Y f is the flow stress that is the yield strength as a function of strain you look at. So, average flow strength then one can define, it is defined by integrating the flow curve as you have seen. So, the equation uh, if you integrate between 0 and the final strain, the value of uh, the, the range would be this one. So, uh, if you take the bar on that, so the flow stress that the bar becomes the average flow stress and this is defined by this equation. So, the maximum strain epsilon is the maximum strain during the deformation process. So, if you look at here the temperature is another very important issue as I said, because ductility is affected. Uh, so, for any metal capital K if you look at the fee, uh, equation earlier equation capital K and N in the flow curve it depends on temperature. So, both strength that is K and strain hardening that is the value of N are reduced at higher temperature. In addition ductility is increased at higher temperature. So, at any deformation operation so, the operation can be accomplished with lower forces and power at elevated temperature. So, three temperature ranges in metal forming uh, one can form, either one can form the process by cold working, one can form either by warm working and one can form also by hot working process. As far as the, the speed of forming is concerned, there is another term we come across, we call it the strain rate sensitivity, because a, every material has a different strain rate sensitivity. So, theoretically a metal in 
uh, hot working behaves like a perfectly plastic material with the strain hardening exponent that is n almost equal to 0. So, the metal should continue to flow at the same flow stress once the stress is reached. However, an additional phenomenon occur during deformation especially at elevated temperature and that is what we call it as a strain rate sensitivity. So, look at these some of the processes where the hot forging process if you have where a heated work piece with tong and a drop hammer may strike to form it. Another is the hot extrusion process where you have a press, third is the deep drying process. So, you put the work piece over the die and a ram comes. In case of the wire drying, this is what is the multiple wire drying operations. So, one can see these processes one by one during the course and uh, hopefully uh, one would be able to look at these processes and uh, So, when we say your uh, cold forming, when you uh, produce a product either of the metal forming process that we discuss forging, rolling, extrusion, wire drying are forming, the cold working generally the temperature range is has a value which is less than or equal to 0.3 T m, T m if we take the melting point of the alloy. So, cold working generally it is uh, done that is before recrystallization temperature and such that it is the, the, the temp working temperature is less than or equal to 0.3 T m and uh, in that in this case the strain rates sensitivity is around between 0 to 0.05 and the coefficient of friction we come across is 0.1. Generally, this things is very much required under the cold working process we say. In warm working process, the temperature range is generally 0.3 T m to 0.5 T m and the strain rate sensitivity is around 0.05 to 0.1 whereas the friction is higher slightly than the cold, so it is 0.2 around. And uh, in case of hot working process, the temperature range is 0.5 T m to 0.75 T m and the strain rate sensitivity exponent ranges from 0.05 to 0.4 and the coefficient of friction runs around 0.4 to 0.5. Okay. So, this is a general guideline to decide that the cold working is above recrystallization temperature and hot working is generally uh, well over recrystallization, uh, recrystallization temperature. The temperature must be above recrystallization temperature in hot working and well over recrystallization temperature in cold working. So, the cold working you know uh, are better suited for uh, large scale production of parts because of the cost of the required equipment and tooling. The advantage of cold working you know that uh, there is no need of heating, the better surface finish is required, the better dimensional control is achieved, therefore, no secondary mechanic machining is required and uh, product possesses better reproducibility and interchangeability. The better strength, fatigue and wear properties of the material is concerned and the directional properties can be imparted. And seventh, the contamination problems are almost negligible in cold working process. 
the disadvantage part of the cold working is the higher forces are required for deformation. Secondly, the heavier and more powerful equipment is required. The less ductility is available. Metal surface must be clean and scale free generally and uh, strain hardening occurs because and uh, this requires intermediate annealing therefore, and uh, uh, undesirable uh, residual stresses may be produced that is the disadvantage of the cold working. If you look at the hot working as I said you require uh, the heat and force uh, when the atoms of the metal reach at a certain higher energy level the new crystals start forming. This is called as recrystallization. When this happens the old grain uh, restructure uh, and uh, the structure deformed by previously carried out mechanical working no larger ex uh, longer exists okay. and uh, instead uh, the new crystals which are strain free are formed. So, that is a good point with uh, hot working and the advantage is that there is no strain hardening lesser force are required for deformation. Greater ductility uh, of material is available and therefore, more deformation is possible. The favorable grain uh, size is obtained leading to better mechanical properties of the material. The equipment of uh, lesser power is required, no residual stresses uh, in the material is required. Whereas, there are certain disadvantages also with uh, hot working like you require the heat which is a costly affair. The poor surface finish is obtained, the poor accuracy and dimensional control of the part the poor reproducibility and interchangeability of the part. The handling and maintaining of the hot metal is very difficult and troublesome and the lower life of tools and equipment is uh, required. The warm working on the other hand is a process which is in between cold and hot. So, because the deformation is carried out at temperature which is intermediate to hot and cold and that is how it is called as hot forming. So, the uh, warm sorry the warm forming, warm forming uh, as compared to the cold forming uh, offers several advantages like the lesser load uh, on toolings and equipments, greater metal ductility fewer number of annealing operations because of the less strain hardening happens here. And uh, as compared to the hot forming, warm forming offers the following advantage like uh, the lesser amount of the heat energy required, better precision of the workpiece, lesser scaling on the part, lesser discarbonization of the parts, better dimensional control, better surface finish, lesser thermal stock on tooling and lesser thermal fatigue to tooling and so greater life of the tooling. And so, what we look here the, the advantages or the good points of the boat cold and hot is added together in the warm form and therefore, it is very popular process nowadays. Another aspect in uh, metal forming especially is the friction and lubrication that is very very important and one cannot ignore. So, the all metal working processes uh, higher the friction the greater the load required to produce you know all of you. So, a particular deformation uh, and uh, consequently much attention has been given to low values of the coefficient of friction. This is uh, not however, usually the major consideration in choosing a metal working lubricant and uh, it elimination of the possibility of damage which is caused by the metal uh, transference uh, from the workpiece to the tool is more important. 
uh, and the tool life can be therefore uh, uh, prolonged both by reducing the friction and by preventing metallic contacts with the workpiece. However, if the lubricant film is very thin or very thick, uh, a matte surface may result. So, to produce a bright surface, it may be necessary to sacrifice some lubricating efficiency as well. So, these are the some of the aspects. So, some operations uh, even require a certain minimum friction like in rolling of flat strip, the, the rolls will skid if the friction is too low and uh, it is necessary to use a relatively poor lubricant to obtain the, uh, the greatest possible reduction in area per pass therefore. So, apart from increasing uh, external forces, frictional stresses has an important influence on metal flow and may cause serious inhomogeneity in the work product as well as surface crack and other defects. So, the role of friction when one cannot ignore and therefore, to overcome this you require some kind of lubrication. So, the lubrication is therefore, an important aspect of metal working and several factors need to be considered. Uh, like the friction contributes around uh, you know about 10 percent to the load for an average heavy reduction of area that is around 40 percent uh, with a good lubricant uh, giving around uh, uh, around 20 percent contribution if the coefficient of friction is between 0 uh, to 1. The frictional contribution is balanced against the increase in force due to redundant work. Okay. So, to find the uh, optimal die angle, you see the die when you use say the extrusion process or wire drying process. So, there is an optimal die angle uh, that depends upon the coefficient of friction as well. So, the friction hill if you look at the rolling that we will discuss later, the peak pressure that comes out of the friction wheel may be considerably increased by friction and uh, increases in roll load around 10 to 20 percent may be found even in cold rolling, where the friction is usually very low. In hot rolling the friction is much higher and the hot uh, and the roll load are further increased therefore, but the, the effect on peak pressure is not so great as the simple theory would predict because of the limitation of the sticking friction. So, in cold forging the load increases around 30 percent are found under common operating conditions. So, that signifies the role of friction. So, if you look at sometimes as I said the friction is undesirable. So, it retard metal flow causing residual stresses that is how it is undesirable. It increases force and power that is how it is undesirable and it helps to rapidly rapid wear of the toolings and that is how it is undesirable. So, one can use lubrication. So, lubrication is used to reduce friction at the workpiece tool interface. Generally, the, the depending on if you look at this the, the texture when the two contacts tool and workpiece takes place, we may come across four types of uh, friction that is the static, sliding, rolling and fluid friction and the friction that acts on sometimes uh, which is when the things are not moving that is the static like you have the piano is, is held in place by static friction. The static friction keeps 
you in your seat and uh, no heat or wear is generated. And another case uh, of the friction where the force result resulting when the pushing or pulling an object over a surface. So, moving day, so the pushing a box across the door heat and wear can result. So, contact is reduced because of the rollers and other ball bearings if you see. So, these are some of the example where we come across. Usually the contact is very important. The, the value of contact friction in between the two especially the work piece and uh, tool in any forming process. Uh, we define the coefficient of friction as nu, nu. For an example, wood to wood contact, the friction mu value is 0.25 to 0.5. Glass to glass contact, it is 0.9 to 1.0. Steel on steel, it is 0.6. Steel on steel with oil, if you some put some oil between, so it is reduced to 0.09. So, rubber on dry pavement, it is 1.0 and sky on if you use ski, if people try on the snow, that gives the mu value as 0 0.04. And Teflon on Teflon, also very useful, comes out to be 0 0.04. So, these are some of the example where the contact matters and the corresponding mu value friction. So, the, the role of friction, uh, uh, it gives a that says the lubricant to choose. So, what is the f if you if you go for a lubrication in forming processes, what should be the function of lubrication? So, the you know the any lubricant will keep the moving parts apart uh, and uh, it will reduce the friction it will also transfer heat, it will also have to carry out the uh, carry away the contaminants and debris, it has to transmit power, it has to protect against wear uh, and it has to prevent corrosion, seal for gases, it has to stop the risk of smoke and rise of objects. So, these points one has to keep in mind while selecting a good lubricant. Okay. So, generally if you look at the different regimes of lubricant, the types of lubricant which occur in metal forming operation, it has a strong influence on the frictional conditions as well as on other important factors such as product finish and the tooling wear rate etcetera. So, that is uh, the characteristics of the different types of regimes of the lubrication, which can occur in drying, extrusion, rolling and upsetting operations. One can classify these four regimes of lubrication generally, thick film lubrication, thin film lubrication and uh, mixed film lubrication that is one and the boundary lubrication. So, one can see here in the case K, where the tooling and the lubricant. So, that is the thick film, the thin film where and the, the mixed film there is a contact, sometimes there is a somewhere it is contact, somewhere it is non contact. So, we come across these four different types of reasons. So, and that corresponding cases we come across in your like the drying or extrusion case say here. So, you see at the inlet there is a boundary where the pressure is very high and then the outside it is pressure drops. So, and even in same ha thing happens in rolling. So, generally these lubricants are important therefore, for any of the metal forming processes. Uh, one can use liquid 
uh, lubricants including emulsions and suspensions. Uh, solid lubricants are also very popular, the greases that is a mixture of solid and uh, liquid, the greases are also very popular, adhesives are very popular. So, one can choose say in extrusion we use some type of lubricant, solid lubricant, glass pads and all that. In seat forming we use some other lubricant. So, we will discuss all these one by one while we take take up the, the chapter wise um, details of the courses. Uh, so, here we close and uh, we will continue further this lecture into uh, other aspects of the things and uh, uh, probably the effect of strain hardening etcetera. So, we will continue in the sec second lecture. So, I thank you all very much for keeping patience. Thank you very much and uh, I would request that please be sincere because uh, this is the starting lecture. So, if you miss you may not understand the, the whole thing. So, we in the second lecture we will discuss the remaining part and also we will discuss the content of the course that we are going to cover in this lecture. Okay? So, thank you very much.